Hi everyone, welcome to another Gumpler model review. Uh, today I have been supplied with another review sample from uh, Hobby Cow Australia and this time if you can sort of tell by the size of this um, we are going to be looking at the new Re 1 100th Nightingale. Now this is the brand new um, series of kits. It's the new 1 to 100 scale. Uh, so you could probably say they're just a high grade, but um, in terms of detail, because they don't they don't have a uh, in an, an inner frame, but um, they do have the outer side outer details of a master grade. So usually. I'd crack these open and show these runners off on film, but today I'm not going to do that because there is a lot. There's a lot of stuff here. Um, I'll just show a few examples. Just for example, these are the side shoulder binders. Um, just for yeah, that's how big that is. If you can sort of gauge the um, scale from my hand there. Um, so there is a lot of large parts, a lot of, uh, there's not much in the way of inner details uh, because of the, um, the reason behind this new series was to create a new line of kits that, uh, that would be extremely expensive to be made in a master grade format, but um, people still want them in that scale, so compromising. Um, and I've decided to go this way without the, without a huge inner frame. So in that bag there's quite a bit there. You see some large red pieces in there. And in the other bag, um, a sticker sheet unfortunately. Uh, I was looking forward to seeing if we, maybe we had water slides, but there's a sticker sheet. Uh, the standard um, beam weapon parts similar to the Sazabi. Um, and this huge section here from the rear end of the Nightingale, um, plus massive, massive, massive guns. So yeah, there's lots of um, big, huge parts with this kit. By the look of it, um, and yeah, just we do have the instruction manual here. Um, just having a quick look at the runners. There are quite a lot. So yeah, so there's quite a bit of pieces there. Not much that's not being used. There's quite pretty much everything's being used. So next step is to uh, unpackage this, put it all together, and we'll be back shortly to show you how it looks and what I think. Alright, he's all put together and from what you can probably see he is absolutely huge. He is quite quite tall and quite quite wide um, and he's very bulky. What I'll do first, I'll start off with the things um, that concern me during the build and then I'll talk about the stuff that I actually really like about it. So first up, um, there's a couple of things, there's seam lines throughout, as you can probably see there, forearms um, and these these cloth fittings have them in the dead centre. That is a bit of a pain, um, not so much on here, that they're easy to get rid of, but the ones with the curved edges and stuff need a little bit more work because you need to match the, the, uh, the sculpt. Um, another couple of things, these um, bits at the top here can be quite easily knocked off. Um, there's no actual peg holding on the red outer armor section, it's just a um, just holding on by pressure just on the joint there. And the movement is quite loose in some of these parts. Very loose. Um, that could be easily fixed though just with a, with a dob of uh, cement just on top of the the pegs and stuff. Uh, I'll just swing him around and side on, so you can sort of get a. Um, that's another problem too. The uh, the front 
armor, or you can probably call it a cod piece, as uh, it keeps falling off, uh, like so. These side binder wings, just the sheer weight, um, they just don't hold hold up. When I do this proper, I'll probably be reinforcing this so I can lift it up higher because it looks pretty ordinary with the wings down flat. So I'll just pop that off for now. So you can sort of get a, a rough idea of the size, the absolute sheer size of it. From front to back, you're looking roughly at about, what's that, 25 centimetres from the tip of the, uh, the cob piece there to the very back tip of the back skirt there. And the width is probably a little bit more, again. There's some pretty cool details, as you can see, um, look, it, that is loose, but that, as I said, they can easily be fixed, but um, apart from that, it's actually pretty good. Now, the stuff I do like, um, for starters, the amount of thrusters and all underneath, um, that's pretty cool. Uh, if you actually had the time and patience to actually LED, put LEDs in all these, that absolutely look awesome. These exhaust details, thruster details here, um, I like all these details. These, uh, the raised part there actually do come off, as well as the thruster, so you can actually take them off, paint them a different colour to the whole rear skirt and put them back on without having to mask. Um, also, I do like well. It's a part. It's that's a part of it. The the um, design, but it's also a bit of a gimmick. You got to stand underneath here. If you can see it. I'll just tilt the camera up a bit. Uh, just under there, that actually supports the weight of the back skirt as well. Um, all these little uh, you got these little holes and indents and raised areas. They're all pretty cool. Now, what that actually reminds me of is the. Well, actually, when I first saw the prototypes of this, plus then I saw actually when I started building it, it reminded me of the very first uh, Sazabi Master Grade. Not only just because of the colour, because of the the big plain boring panels. Um, for example, you like these ones here on the back, uh, similar sort of raised armour sections like on that Sazar the old Master Grade Sazabi. But because it's plain, there's not much detail as in uh, panel lines and stuff, it opens up a lot of opportunities for the modeler to actually add that detail to the kit and make it a more um, detailed and exciting piece. Ideally, I'd love to see this whole kit in a, like, a version car sort of a, a design, similar to the um, Sazabi that came out about 12 months ago, um, which is pretty, which look, will look pretty awesome actually, but, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, a few other things, these, as I said, they, they are a bit loose, but they don't actually move, so they're fixed in place, the head itself has very, very little movement, but there's a bit of movement in the waist, The arms have got standard sort of high grade um, movement because as you probably realise if you know about this kit they do use a, um, they don't use an inner frame like a master grade, they are the master grade scale but they use a sort of a setup similar to a high grade inside. So even though these are called the, uh, the RE100 line of kits, they're more, they're Master grade sort of um, detail on the outside, or an older older style master grade on the outside, and a high grade design on the inside. I'll just take a few things apart so you can see them a bit better. Um, the front skirts here, on the back, you do have these arm pieces, but unfortunately, that's it. Uh, there's no 
I would have loved to have seen a joint system there so you could actually turn it around and pop them out um, like so similar to what you'd see on the base of the binders on the high grade Cassatria. Um but either way that's a it's a nice little design so it's even if like just like that looks pretty cool but uh, without that articulation it's yeah, pretty ordinary I'll take off the arms so you can see a bit more of the detail inside and this uh, side skirt here they do use a new pol new style of polycap um, you can probably see there oh, actually I've got a spare one sitting here somewhere um, they use these ones instead of being a round um, or a square fit they've actually hexagonal hexa they're hexagons uh, which makes them to fit in a lot um, snugger on the edges of these as and keeping the same um, the same pressure again some more thrusters there on the sides now there's not much in the way of articulation I'll just move the camera um, for the legs because that's about it um, that's due mainly because of the side the sheer size of this the um, it does spin right around and as you see the similar similar arm set up to the old Sazabi master grade um, and you also notice that the feet actually do have these sections that come out the side which is a part of the design but at the same time it actually adds stability to the actual model Uh, one other thing, a couple of other things actually, um, before we move on to just a couple of other stuff. Um, we have the rifle. Now that's roughly measures close to from the butt to the tip, around 29 centimetres. So for a 100 scale uh, rifle, that is huge. Um, you also do have a shield as I said the similarities to the Sazabi uh, this shield is nearly almost identical there's a few slight different details to it um, but it is very very similar to the Sazabi shield plus on the back you get to actually um, it has a spot where you can actually hide your BMAX which is pretty neat and just the effect parts are just your standard beam effect parts um, that go with most of these weapons. Similar again to the Sazabi and the Sinanju. And the, uh, the final last thing I want to talk about is the head. Um, these are designed to work with the LED system, uh, the Bandai LEDs. So it's just a matter of popping out. The section at the top here and the whole the whole section comes out like so um, and the LED unit just sits in the bottom there and what it how it works is there's a um, single uh, clear rod that actually comes up and around and pokes out to the eye and just reflect reflects that light so just the, the standard uh, Bandai LED units will fit in this like with just about all the other new 100 scale kits and it just sits in, clips back in place like so um, as the leg falls off look, all up, uh, look it's a, it's a very good kit has a couple of fitting issues. Um, it does lack a bit of detail in spots. Um, the huge, absolutely huge side of it, size of it, um, can cause a few issues with weight and stability and stuff like that. But um, look, all up, all in all, it is a blank canvas um, for the more experienced model art. They're going to be adding detail to this left, right, and center. 
LEDs, metal parts, um, so extra scribing, etc. etc. Um, so look, ideally, yep, it's a great kit. I think it's it's great. I think it's worth the money, especially when it's a, a kit this size. And the price point that Bandai haven't got it marketed at is actually quite good value. But as I said, it does need a bit of work. But uh, the more experienced modeler will be able to handle this, no worries at all. So thanks for watching this review, and we'll see you next time.